Today I want to give you a very short video on the use of electrodes with the Infrex unit. You've got Infrex, which is a combination of interferential and TENS unit. The difference on interferential and TENS is you get a lot more electricity. The dosage is higher with interferential because it's going off and on 8,000 plus times a second. A typical TENS unit is only 150 a second. Remember, you can do both with the Infrex, but interferential is what's used the most. When you start going off and on 8,000 times, that's a lot more electricity. So you will get your Infrex unit with a 3-inch round electrode. If you were using a typical TENS unit, you could use a much smaller electrode because there's not as much current. There's a lot of current coming through interferential, so smaller ones tend to get more uncomfortable. However, don't get stuck in the box of thinking. Both electrodes have to be the same size. One reference point I will give you is you can type in TED, T-E-D, on our search on our website, the MedFax website, and you will get this story. But you can read about it. TED is one that suffers from a, an, an advancing peripheral neuropathy times approximately 28 years at the time this was done. TED needed to put an electrode up around his knee, but he also, because he has calf pain, and we needed to put another one. We didn't want to put it on the bottom of his foot, on the callus area, because callus is a resistor of electricity. So we wanted to put one right in the arch, which has no callus, and it's a great place, if you're familiar with reflexology, on where you have sensitive points. Well, what we did with Ted was we simply took a large electrode and put it up here. A large electrode would not fit well down there on his bottom of his foot. So then we took a smaller electrode and put it right into the space in his arch and he was able to achieve the stimulation that helped him simply by changing the size of the electrode on the same channel. What I want you to be aware of, some of our protocols will involve Hoku, which is basically the web space right here. And a lot of times that big of an electrode, a three inch electrode, just totally encompasses it, will not work. So we go with a smaller electrode, or we can trim an electrode and make it sort of fit Hoku. And then we would use a larger electrode, say it was an arm problem. We may put the larger electrode up here behind the shoulder so that we have stimulation through Hoku all the way up the whole arm where the pain's being experienced. That's an example of changing electrode sizes. My point to you is don't be afraid of thinking outside the box. Try to realize what you're doing, use our videos, use our articles, talk to us, and we will do what we can to help you understand what our goals are. But our electrodes are nothing but tools. They're tools we use to gain relief, and we're not afraid to mix and match in order to make it you capable of maximizing your relief and moving forward from that. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, just give us a call.